In this video, we will take a look at an alternate version of the put call parity. This version is called the put call forward parity. This version, as the name suggests, it chooses to work with the forward price of the underlying asset instead of the spot price. To understand the put call forward parity, let's very quickly recap the simple version of the put call parity, one which holds for that case where the underlying asset does not pay you any sort of income. Okay, This version of the put call parity, it simply reads as the difference in the premiums of two options. The first one is a European call. The second one is a European put. Both of these options, they are on the same underlying asset. Both of them, they have the same strike, which is denoted by K. And both of them, they have the same expiry, which happens, let's say, T years from today. Okay, so as per the put call parity, the difference in the premiums of these two options should simply be equal to the difference between the level of the underlying asset and the price of a zero coupon bond whose face value is equal to K, which was the strike of these two options, and whose maturity is the same as the expiry of these two options, okay, which was capital T years from today. Okay, so this is the simple version of the put call parity. Now, let's do this. Let's understand the reason why this relationship holds. Because understanding the reason behind this relationship will help us derive the put call forward parity as well. Okay, take a look at this relationship. The left-hand side of this relationship can be thought of to be a portfolio that contains a long position in one unit of a European call coupled with a short position in one unit of a European put. Similarly, the right-hand side of this relationship is also a portfolio which contains a long position in one unit of the underlying asset coupled with a short position in a zero coupon bond. Face value K, maturity T years from today. Okay, let's do this. Let's fast forward time and let's position ourselves, let's say T years from today. And let's try and work out what is the value, the worth of each of these two portfolios. Let's begin with the LHS portfolio first, the left-hand side portfolio. Okay, Let's say T years from today, the underlying is trading at this level, which is S sub T. Both of these options, which are sitting in our LHS portfolio, both of them, they will expire as of this time, T years from today. And therefore, the worth, the value of this LHS portfolio would simply be equal to the total payoff, which comes from both of these options combined. Okay, what's the payoff which comes from this European call? The payoff, graphically speaking, would look something like this. Okay, this is the point K, the strike. To the left of K, that means if ST is less than K, the payoff will be zero. To the right of K, that means when ST is greater than K, the payoff will be ST minus K. Okay, combining the two, the payoff is simply max of zero comma ST minus K. Okay, what's the payoff which comes from this guy, a short European put? the payoff looks something like this. Okay, you can reason this out that this payoff is simply minus because it's a short European put of max of K minus ST comma zero. Okay, if you were to combine these two payoffs, okay, I want you to aggregate these two payoffs. What do you get? You actually get this solid line. Okay, and the equation of this solid line is simply ST minus K. 
okay it's a line which has a slope of 1 and which intersects the horizontal axis at this point k okay equation st minus k now let's come to the rhs portfolio the right hand side t years from today this long position in one unit of the underlying asset will be worth st okay then t years from today this zero coupon bond will be maturing and it will be returning its promised face value which is k so the value of the zero coupon bond would simply be k okay so the total worth of the rhs portfolio is st minus k which if i were to plot against st again gives me a straight line like this whose equation is st minus k okay so what have we achieved basically we have reasoned this out that the lhs portfolio and the rhs portfolio both of these portfolios they have the same worth the same value t years from today at each of the possible realizations of this st okay so law of one price it tells us that because both of these portfolios they have the same worth t years from today both of these portfolios should have the same worth today as well it should cost you the same for setting up each of these two portfolios okay the worth of the lhs portfolio as of today is c naught minus p naught the worth of the rhs portfolio as of today is s naught minus the present value of k okay and this helps us establish this simple version of the put call parity okay now let's transition towards the focus of this video which is the put call forward parity okay first of all let me ask you this question what is the motivation behind moving on to this alternate version well the motivation is that the put call forward parity well it's a more generalized version of the put call parity a version which actually holds for a wider choice of the underlying asset here we had said that our underlying asset does not pay you any sort of income if i were to pick an underlying asset let's say which does pay you some kind of income because the put call forward parity chooses to work with the forward price and not the spot price of the underlying asset the forward price can quite well accommodate the income which is paid by the underlying asset okay so that's the motivation for us to move to the put call forward parity it's a more generalized version okay now let's talk about how will we move to the put call forward parity okay for that let's retain the lhs portfolio as it is okay no change is required let's focus on the rhs portfolio and let's change things slightly okay the final worth of the rhs portfolio t years from today was st minus k okay a function of this st okay now what if i were to ask you this question can you recreate this st minus k but without investing directly in the underlying asset as of today okay instead of investing directly in the underlying asset can you go ahead and put on positions let's say which involve forwards slash futures on the underlying asset and create this st minus k okay so i'm asking you to create this st minus k through more synthetic kind of means okay by not directly investing in the underlying asset itself okay let's do this for this purpose let's go to the forward slash futures market for the underlying asset let's assume that the risk free rate is a constant and hence let's ignore the differences between forwards and futures and let's assume that as of today 
which is time zero, for a final settlement that happens t years from today, let the forward slash futures price be this guy, F0T. Okay, so let's do this. To create this ST minus K, let's enter into a long position in a forward contract on our underlying asset with this pre-agreed forward price F0T. Okay, what will the payoff of this long position in a forward contract be T years from today? The payoff would simply be ST minus F zero t okay remember it's a long position and therefore the payoff is st minus f zero t if you were to plot this payoff as a function of st this is how the plot would look like okay a straight line with slope one and a line which intersects the horizontal axis at this point f zero t okay what we want is actually st minus k. What we have is st minus f0 t. What if to this payoff, which comes from the long forward, let's add another amount, which is f0 t minus k. Okay, so this amount, okay, is independent of st. So if I were to plot this amount on this, you know, plot which we, are, which we are plotting, this amount would simply be this horizontal line, okay, F 0 T minus K, okay. If I were to combine this horizontal line with this payoff, which comes from the long forward, the combination of the two indeed does give me S T minus K, okay, the S T minus K, which I was looking for. Okay, so very quickly, how would you get this flat payoff, which is independent of ST? All you have to do is, as of today, you will have to enter into a long position in a zero coupon bond whose face value is F0T minus K and whose maturity is T years from today. Okay, so what have we achieved? We are saying that if you want to create st minus k synthetically what's required is a long position in a forward contract on your underlying asset with a pre-agreed price f0 t coupled with a zero coupon bond with a face value of f0 t minus k and with maturity capital t okay now let's do this let's again invoke the same logic which we had done for our simple put call parity. What we have here are two portfolios, LHS portfolio and a new RHS portfolio. Both these portfolios, they have the same final worth T years from today at each and every possible realization of ST. Since both of these portfolios have the same final worth T years from today, law of one price tells us that the worth of both of these portfolios as of today should also be the same. The value, the worth of this portfolio we know is C0 minus P0, no changes here. The worth, the value of this portfolio as of today will be equal to the present value of F0T minus K for the ZCB portion and zero for the forward portion. Why zero? Because this long forward is a fair forward. Okay, it has been transacted at the fair forward price F0T and hence at initiation, the value of this long forward contract should be equal to zero. Okay, this brings us to the put call forward parity. C0 minus P0, the initial worth of this portfolio should be equal to the present value of F0T minus K plus zero, the initial worth of this portfolio. So we have the put call forward parity in front of us. Let's rearrange it a bit and arrive at a version which is usually given in most of the textbooks. And this is the version which I'm talking about. Let's bring this 
k on the left hand side and let's take the p naught on the right hand side c naught plus the present value of k which is written as k times a discount factor i'm working with a risk free rate which is annually compounded so my discount factor is 1 over 1 plus r to the power t should be equal to p naught on the right hand side plus f 0 t times the same discount factor 1 over 1 plus r to the power t now if you are somebody who wants to very quickly apply what you've just learned to a quick numerical example let's do that let's say i am standing as of this time zero which is let's say 7th september 2021 as of this time what i am being quoted is let's say the forward slash futures price of an equity index with final settlement happening t years from today which is this date 18th december 2021 okay the forward slash futures price is 4526.5 okay again as of today let's say the premium of a european call with strike 4540 and with expiry again 18 december 2021 is 137.3 let's say the annually compounded risk free rate of interest is two percent per annum please try and use the put call forward parity to work out what should be the fair premium of a european put on the same equity index with this same strike and with this same expiry okay what should the fair premium be okay this video was a quick look at this alternate version of the put call parity and this version is the put call forward parity